Folks, ever since Street Fighter 1 back in 1987, the standard method of inputting special moves in fighting games tends to be stuff like quarter circle forward, quarter circle back, dragon punch motion. These types of things are how most games are going to give you your characters special moves. In addition to charge characters as well, where you hold the direction for a short amount of time and then press the other direction. So these are the standard ways, but today I wanted to talk about something a little bit different. It's gonna be characters who have unique ways of doing their moves in fighting games, ways that make them different from the rest of the cast, even in their own game. So let's talk about some unique inputs in fighting games. By the way, I'm not gonna be including things like Ivy summon suffering or geese with the pretzel motion. I feel like the ultra hard, difficult, complicated input motions probably deserve their own video. So let me know in the comments if you would like to see a video about that kind of thing. But today, let's talk about some unique and interesting types of inputs for fighting game characters. So first off, let's start out with the character that kind of inspired me to make this list, which is Ed from Street Fighter V. So Ed is pretty interesting because he does not have fireball motions or dragon punch motions. He does not have charge motions. So how do you do his special moves? Uh, it's kind of interesting. Some of his special moves, you hold the button down to do it. So you can see if I want to do heavy punch, I can just hold the heavy punch button down and I'll do that special move. Some of them, you just press two buttons at the same time. So if you press two punches at the same time, he'll do his psycho upper. If you press two kicks at the same time, he'll do his psycho rising kick. Some attacks you do by mashing. So you can see if I wanna do the psycho flicker, I just mash any punch button repeatedly. And then a lot of his moves are kind of follow-up based. So he has this attack, and then if you press any other punch button, he will do a follow-up, which becomes a fireball. So he has a lot of moves like this as well with his Psycho Rising. You can press punch to follow it up. So his special moves are pretty context dependent and uh, pretty interesting because you just press some buttons and the move just happens. You don't have to do any kind of fireball thing. And so despite this simplicity, you know, players like Ending Walker were really able to cook with Ed and make this character look really amazing. But in addition to just Ed as a character in Street Fighter V, I think he's interesting for what he did to Street Fighter in general. I think a lot of people believe that Ed was kind of the testing ground for the modern control system. So of course in Street Fighter VI now, you can set any character to modern mode and all of a sudden everyone kind of plays like Ed. You just press one button to do specials, directions plus buttons gets you your different specials. So yeah, it definitely seems like maybe they were experimenting with the idea of one button special moves when they created Ed and that ended up just being a built-in mechanic that you can do in Street Fighter VI. And funny enough, now that they're adding Ed to Street Fighter VI, a lot of people wondered well, how's that gonna work? Is he not gonna even have classic mode? Is he gonna be modern only? But it, apparently they're gonna be adding traditional controls to Ed. So if you pick him on classic, you are gonna have to do fireball and dragon punch motions. Uh, and if you pick him on modern, he's gonna play more similar to how he did in five. So pretty cool that they were, they were testing things out without really telling us. It's at least a little bit what it seems like. And uh, now we have modern controls, which are a pretty nice thing for new players to help them ease into the game. So I really like Ed for that reason. All right, so we covered a character with really simple controls, but now let's talk about a character with really complicated controls. And that is going to be Batista from Under Night In Birth. So when you first pick Batista, you'll think to yourself, okay, this is kind of like a Guile character, right? Hold back and then press forward plus attack to do a projectile, just like Guile. Hold down and then press up plus attack to do sort of a flash kick anti-air, just like Guile. Uh, but what really makes this character unique is she also has reverse charge moves. So I've never really seen this from any other character. If you hold forward and then press back plus attack, she has a move tied to that, which is a little bit crazy like really really hard to wrap your mind around if you've been playing normal charge characters your whole life all of a sudden you have to do things in reverse that's insane same thing with up we hold up and then press down plus attack to get a special move that way as well so we have to deal with normal charge moves and we have to deal with reverse charge moves some of which you do from the air 
She also has moves where you have to hold down a button and then release it, similar to a character like Mega Man or Zero from Marvel vs. Capcom. So all this combined, to me, just makes one of the most complicated, most difficult to even wrap your head around type characters when it comes to just doing their basic inputs. Whenever I try to play this character, it seems truly impossible to me. I don't understand how anyone does it. Doing reverse charges while also worrying about hold and release and stuff like that, it, it is just too much. But of course that makes it even more impressive when you see the high level Batistas and what they're able to accomplish with this character because yeah, if you actually try to do this character's combos and stuff, it looks crazy, but people make it look really effortless when they do it in matches and in tournaments. So I'm a huge fan of Undernight for, you know, trying different things, going out of their way to make the characters feel really unique. And I think Batista is a great example of that. So if you ever want a challenge, try Batista's combo trials. And, uh, you know, let me know in the comments if you want to see me try them. I don't think I've ever done them in a video before, so uh, we can test it out in the new Undernight Inbirth 2. Let me know. Next up, let's look at a character who I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with, and that is going to be Gold Lewis from Guilty Gear Strive. So if you guys don't know this, a lot of the original Street Fighter 2 special move motions were chosen because they match the sort of visual element of the move. So Zangief spinning pile driver. He spins around, and so you do a 360 motion to do spinning pod driver. Blanca rolling attack or Blanca ball, he kind of shoots across the screen, so that's why you hold back and then you quickly press forward plus punch to fly across the screen. So when we're talking about matching a move's motion to the input that you do, Gold Lewis, I think, is like the ultimate example of this. Gold Lewis has a very small number of special move inputs, actually. He really only has three. He has the chain gun, he has the drone, and then he has Behemoth Typhoon, which is kind of his main defining move. But Behemoth Typhoon is not just one move. It's more like, I don't know, like eight different moves. So the way that it works is whatever half circle motion you do with the stick is the motion that he will swing his coffin in. So you can see if I do a half circle forward, he swings his coffin in that motion. If I do it back, he swings it in that motion. If I do it down to up, he swings it down to up, or I can do it down to up backwards, and he'll swing it that way. Even the really tricky stuff, like back to forward over the top, is doable with Gold Lewis, and the coffin will follow that motion. So it's really crazy trying to do a lot of these. Some of them are really tricky inputs to actually do when you need them, especially the ones that start with up. But when you can find the right moment to pull these off, the properties of the moves are extremely strong. They do a ton of damage on hit and on block. They have really good frame data properties. So Gold Lewis, a character who a lot of people thought was like bottom one in the game when he first came out, uh, is now really respected and considered to actually maybe be one of the best in the game because of some of the buffs that he got as well as people just figuring out the sheer power of these different behemoth typhoons because some of these are just crazy. So nowadays it is definitely not an uncommon occurrence to turn on a tournament and see Gold Lewis players absolutely blowing it up. Like I said, the properties of the behemoth typhoon are so crazy in terms of their frame advantage, their damage, the chip they do on block that Gold Lewis has become a crazy threat and a really exciting character to watch. So I really love to see Gold Lewis going in and doing his thing. And I think that he is a really unique and cool character design as well. All right. I think so far these have all been a little bit too expected, right? These have all been characters that you guys probably know pretty well. So let's go off the beaten path a little bit. We're going to Killer Instinct to take a look at the Arbiter. So the Arbiter is obviously a guest character from Halo. And at first he'll seem like a pretty normal character. You know, this is a six button game. He's got pretty expected normals. He's got, you know, an overhead on quarter circle back. He's got this lunging attack, quarter circle forward command grab on quarter circle back kick where he goes invisible. Pretty cool, but he has a unique mechanic as well. You can see it over above his shadow meter. He has a bullet gauge and he has a plasma grenade gauge. You can throw plasma grenades at the opponent. And uh, what's interesting about this to me is the inputs to do them. So on stick, it's a little bit weird. It's it's roundhouse kick, heavy kick to shoot the bullets. And then it's all three punches to throw the grenades. So why did they choose 
these inputs to do these moves. Well, it'll make a little bit more sense if I switch to controller. All right, so uh, you can see I'm on controller now, and uh, yeah, all his other inputs are what you would expect, but if you wanna know how to do the gunshot and the grenade, by default, the, the bindings for these are gonna be right trigger to shoot the gun and left trigger to throw the grenade, which is exactly how it was in Halo. So I think it's really cool that they were kind of inspired by, obviously, Arbiter's uh, game that he originates from, and they use that to influence the controls. So if you're a Halo player and you pick up the game for the first time and you wanna know, hey, how do I how do I shoot the gun and throw the grenades with Arbiter? It's exactly what you would expect. It matches up to the FPS. So I think that is so cool. This is obviously something we've seen with other games like Akuma in Tekken. You know, they worked really hard to make Akuma feel authentic and make it feel like you're just playing the same Akuma that you've played in Street Fighter. You know, he has all these 2D mechanics put into a 3D game. So I think it's really cool when we get guest characters and the developers go out of their way to make them feel like the character, even though they're in a totally different system. So it might seem small, but I think Arbiter having the, having the gunshots and the grenades, just like the FPS, uh, I think is really cool. So if we see more guest characters in the future, like with Tekken 8, for example, I really hope that they will do the same and uh, make the guest characters feel like you're playing the original character, feel like you can make that transition really quickly if you're a fan of the game the character originates from. All right, guys, I got one more for you, and this is going to be going back to Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. We're going to take a look at Rize Kujikawa. So if you guys haven't played Persona 4 before, Rize is an idol. She's a singer. So naturally, a lot of her attacks involve, you know, her microphone. She can send out music notes towards the opponent and stuff like that. But the move that really interests me here is one of her supers. You can see if we land this super, we actually start a rhythm game where I have to hit all the notes. I, I'm missing a bunch, so I'm, I'm not going to do that much damage here. The more notes you hit, the more damage you do. We only did 1350. All right, I'm going to buckle down. I'm going to see if I can if I can full combo this super and get max damage. Let's see. Let's see. It, it cycles through different parts of the song, and, and some of them are definitely easier than others. I think I, I, think I nailed it. I think I did perfect. 3,900. Let's go. That's so much damage. So yeah, I, I don't think I've ever seen that in a fighting game before, a rhythm game built into the fighting game, and they did this just for one character, which I think is is really cool. So uh, yeah, let me know, guys, are there any other characters that you could think of that have a really unique input system that I didn't cover? And also, let me know, oh, 25-25 on that one, not too good, but yeah, let me know. Uh, if you're interested in seeing a video about the most difficult inputs in fighting games as well, there's a few of those that come to mind. I think I could probably put together a list or maybe a tier list for you guys. So uh, let me know what you think. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video as always. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.